Although often disagreeing with academic explanations regarding the origin and past constructor of many of the world's as yet unexplained ruins, some have become so old, the field of geology can often become an ally to these deliberate misconceptions, supporting the premise based around permitted timelines, events already dated and published, disguised assumptions as to the timeline for the development and chronological dating for Homo sapiens' initial globetrotting, with a timeline for their travels across Earth supposedly already established. Additionally, as the ruins contradictory to this timeline of events age and slowly erode away to the point of near unidentifiability, this predictably allows these same geologists to merely dismiss such artifacts as natural formations. However, sometimes ruins will turn up in locations that have already been explored, dated, and explained by these same fields. This accurate study of terrain shift, completed by scholars prior to the discovery of ancient ruins, later discovered to be resting, hidden within these particular places. Submerged ruins that geology had already established a timeline for when these areas in question were originally flooded. As such, when ancient ruins are found to be submerged in these locations, instead of remaining an ally for the currently attested timeline of events, have already condemned themselves through their accurate dating of the rise in water levels, thus instead become unwitting advocates for the fact that not only do these ruins undeniably outdate the current attested chronology of the development of civilization, but prove beyond doubt that past now lost civilizations did indeed once exist, with many of these advanced cultures, just as biblical and Atlantean legends have long suggested, sunk into the sea during a great flood, only rediscovered with the use of penetrative radar systems attached to modern satellites. We have in the past covered the ancient ruins found off the coast of Cuba, also submerged under ancient waters which includes a compelling pyramid complex. Also, the Bimini Road, which although clearly of an artificial nature, has to be dismissed by the modern academic world, clearly due to the vast amount of time that such ruins have been submerged. With many of these sites, according to geological studies done upon local sea levels, also before said discoveries were exposed, dating them to a minimum of 12,000 years of age. These discoveries have not just been made within the oceans of Earth. Thanks to this same technology, a mega metropolis has also been found under the dense jungles of Guatemala. This discovery, although not sharing the same undeniable data for its age, supported by geological study, is of such an unimaginably enormous size, revealed to contain such advanced architectural planning, that it and many other similar sites have forced many fields of historical study to re-evaluate their understandings of past populations, of what we strongly believe are, in fact, remnants of a now lost, yet once highly successful, prosperous ancient civilization. And our subject for this video was found by the most unlikely of individuals, a skipper of a trawler, scanning the seabed with sonar off the coast of Azores, was stunned when he peered at his readout screen and was met by the outline of a near-pristine ancient pyramid. After sharing his discovery with the mainstream media, certain individuals with penetrative satellite radar systems were equally astonished to discover that this ancient now-submerged pyramid, just like Guatemala, is but a single piece of yet another megametropolis that was hidden until now that according to previous geological studies of the sea levels around the Spanish coast, has been dated at a minimum of 100,000 years old, overwhelming evidence to support not only the channel's continued posit of hidden, highly ancient, once highly advanced lost civilization, but that modern academia continued to be funded to ignore them, going to great lengths to conceal such discoveries although exploration is currently at its early stages. We will, of course, keep you posted. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. There are countless submerged and very ancient cities 
dotted across the oceans of our Earth, many of these cities all but forgotten until their rediscoveries within the modern era. When attempting to locate these mysterious places, it is beneficial for one to be aware of past sea levels. This, of course, can make the task of locating these submerged cities an awful lot easier. The main consensus is that world sea levels have largely stayed the same since the arrival of Homo sapiens, only really dipping or rising by around 120 meters across the Earth. When discussing these finds, you will, on all but a few exceptions, find yourself within these specific regions. One of the more interesting exceptions to this rule has to be the underwater city which was discovered just off the coast of Cuba a few years ago, a submerged city which sits over 700 meters below the waves. This depth, of course, being far below that which has experienced a breach over the past hundred or so thousand years. A theory that the landmass once rested upon the surface, subsequently being sunk by tectonic activities, was argued. Yet since its exploration as a possibility, it has been found to have not been the case. The results of this investigation strongly indicating that this city and its accompanying landmass somehow remained under the waves for more than a hundred thousand years. Greenville Draper of Florida's International University concluded that it was highly unlikely that such a tectonic event could have occurred, quoted as saying, nothing of this magnitude has been reported ever before, especially from the Mediterranean. Draper's, among many others' analysis, has of course come to conclusions. Conclusions which thankfully appear honest, making them extremely controversial, yet as with other fields of study in life, they are reluctant to reveal the implications of such conclusions. For example, if the research is correct, and judging by the extremely capable people tasked with this undertaking, there is no reason to suspect it is not, then this submerged city has remained submerged for over a hundred thousand years. This gives us two possible alternatives. One that the city predates the arrival of developed man on Earth, according to academically accepted timelines. Or two, it reinforces our ever-growing accusations here at Mystery History of a past here on Earth which is unimaginably more ancient than we have been led to believe. A human society which has flourished and regressed on no less than three occasions. It could, of course, be both. There is a possibility that this ancient city was indeed built submerged under the waves by a once highly advanced civilization of Homo sapiens. Yet a more likely scenario, of course, would be that this ancient city was constructed at a time when the Caribbean Sea was a dry basin, and as the sea began to form, it was subsequently submerged. Yet, alas, modern academia readily rejects such a hypothesis. So, if we do not accept this as a likely possibility, then we must conclude that a primitive ancient culture, with primitive stone tools and certainly no diving equipment, were somehow responsible for the construction of this submerged city, complete with enormous pyramids on a foundation resting over 700 meters beneath the Caribbean Sea. On the 30th of July 1967, a group of seven sponge divers were exploring the bottom of Rock Lake within Wisconsin. What they found, however, is more precious than sponge, or indeed golden relics. They would make a discovery so perplexing, some specialists are still struggling to explain it to this day. One of the divers, John Kennedy, stumbled across a large triangular rock formation near the middle of the lake a structure which towered up from the deep, almost breaching the surface. He estimated that the structure which still existed above the mud was around 20 feet in diameter and around 40 feet from the edge of the lake. John collected several small fragments from around the structure, specimens which would later aid in collaborating their claims. Although rumors of an ancient pyramid existing in the lake had circulated since the 1930s, this was the first time in modern history that evidence had successfully been retrieved. It must be noted, Rock Lake is extremely ancient, and the area that is said to house an ancient pyramid has remained submerged for well over 10,000 years. Due to this geological fact, if it were not for John's physical evidence, the site may have been successfully overlooked by mainstream archaeology. 
heated debate regarding John's and other claims from the 30s now raged on for several years, many mainstream archaeologists predictably rejecting the premise that a pyramid of over 10,000 years of age is resting, or more precisely, hiding, at the bottom of Rock Lake. They claim some enormous structures lay there. Native American legend records that they were built by an ancient peoples who were driven away during a flood. Although evidence was mounting, skeptics continued to insist that those involved were mistaken. It took a flight by aerial photographer Jack Latornio to silence such rhetoric. According to mainstream academia, the site simply shouldn't exist. Yet it does. It is another valuable relic of our past which tell of a history drenched in antiquity, a history we are slowly unraveling. We have covered several anomalies of recent, which some fields of study would rather be kept silent, often attempting to dismiss such objects as a fraud, or if structural, as a natural formation. And our next topic is no exception. Just off the coast of Yanaguni, among the Ryukyu Islands of Japan, is a place once passionately argued as a natural formation by countless academic scholars, now all but surrendered to the truth. And once you are introduced to the sheer enormity of this city, you will begin to realize why some were so keen for the world to remain ignorant of this place. One of the largest pyramid structures found here is over 600 feet wide and 900 feet tall. Comparatively, the tallest of Egypt's being a mere 450 feet, making these submerged and suppressed pyramids almost twice as large. Due to the public debunking efforts experienced, the majority of the world's population have subsequently overlooked this place, this regardless of the exploratory dives made upon the buildings. Dives resulting in the discovery of tool marks and carvings made upon the stone, archaeologically indicating that they were indeed constructed, the evidence has clearly been compelling, meaning honest professionals, including Teruki Ishii, professor of geology at Tokyo University, have determined that the city's submergence occurred at the end of the last ice age, which was around 10,000 years ago, meaning these ruins predate this event by some considerable time. If this is accepted to be the case, however, billions of history books would have to be reprinted, taking into account an advanced Eastern culture, among many others. Several intriguing artifacts have been retrieved from around the city. Strange stones, which display as yet unknown petroglyphs, along with several strange stone tools. Additionally, an enormous stone monolith, adorned with what many have suspected was a human face, has been discovered at the foot of the largest pyramid. Was this what the original Sphinx looked like upon Earth? After mounting evidence in favor of the enormous formations being an extremely ancient pyramid complex, it seems academia finally buckled to the data. National Geographic running a story confirming that the city does indeed exist, and conveniently presenting an explanation complete with a scenario involving a candidate civilization. One must wonder, why was this quote likely proposition now put forward? Why was this so preposterous before being forced to concede in regard to the ancient city's original origins? Stating, quote, Some experts believe that the structures could be all that's left of Mu, a fabled Pacific civilization rumored to have vanished beneath the waves. Although they forget to mention that this specific landmass has remained at the same level since before the last ice age, just who were these ancient people? What amazing secrets are they still awaiting to tell us? We will, of course, keep you posted.